Today I'm going to show you exactly how to find those deals that make you money each and every time. We're going to cover today exactly what resources to use not only to find the deals but to also figure out how much potential profit there is in there so you can make money every single time. And it's not only just about that but also about protecting your hard earned money. So let's deep dive into some of the resources that I use to find deals. The very first one that we're going to go into is going to be Facebook Marketplace. That has been my go to to find these deals to buy them and resell them. But today we're just going to focus on the finding those deals aspect of it. There are other resources out there. There's Craigslist, there's OfferUp. And although those have been good in the past, they've been really inundated with a lot of marketing schemes and also a lot of dealerships that use them. I have found out through experience that the best source has been Facebook Marketplace. Let's go into that so I can show you how to navigate through it and how to sift through all of the stuff that's on there and find those awesome deals. There are three very important things that you wanna consider before finding your profitable deal. So number one, you wanna determine a budget that you're comfortable with. I know that you don't wanna risk your hard earned money. And so the fact that you pick a budget, stick by it, really assures you high profit margins. Besides that, the second step is to find yourself a checklist. I'm gonna provide some resources for you. There are three very important steps you need to take before finding your next deal. Number one is pick yourself a budget and stick by it because that's going to assure you maximum profit. The second one is to really find yourself a checklist, something that you can follow to make sure you go through everything you need to look at when you're inspecting a car. And although that's a little bit advanced or, or kind of next steps, you definitely want to make sure that you're equipped with all of this. And third but not least is definitely get yourself a scan tool. A diagnostic scan tool, OBD2 scanner, is something that's so common nowadays because a lot of these modern cars, you can diagnose a lot just by connecting this really simple to use scanner. And I'm gonna show you right now what they look like if you're not familiar with them. Now there's very basic ones like this one that I'm showing you right now. You can go onto Amazon and just go through what they have to offer. Now this is a very basic one that's really going to just diagnose the car and tell you if, if there's anything that needs addressing right away. And a lot of the times with these basic ones, it'll provide a code for you. You can use your smartphone to look up that code for that car as an example. If you punch in 2010 Honda Accord into Google and put the code right next to it, and it'll give you some of the things that it can be and how to fix it. So this is something that you definitely want to practice and get familiar with. And so this is a very basic one. I also wanted to show you something that's a little bit more advanced just so that you have in the back of your mind. You can definitely spend a few hundred dollars on something like this. This is currently something that I own because there's a lot of things that I actually fix on the cars myself and I wanted to invest in a tool that I can use to save me some money rather than giving it to someone else to repair my car and actually affect my profit margins. But at the end of the day, you always have a chance to work this into your budget as far as farming out some of the labor and work you want done on your car because that's what's so simple about this is that you can choose for yourself how much of the work you wanna do, if any. And those are some routes you can take and it's so simple to use. I'm gonna show you exactly how once we determine a car and I'll show you step by step whether you wanna do your work, the work yourself it's, it's, if it's simple or send it out to someone that you trust that's not gonna charge you an arm and a leg. So now that we've determined those three things, we can move on to Facebook Marketplace. This is Facebook Marketplace. If you're familiar with it already, fantastic. If not, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to navigate. The one thing I'm gonna recommend is that your profile, if, if you already have a Facebook and your profile is, I keep mine pretty simple. Um, if it's 
if it's just a picture of an animal on there and people don't really see who you are, uh, that might, you know, bring up some some things for you that makes things a little bit more complicated to find these deals and have that person trust you and reach out to you just because unfortunately impressions or first impressions on these profiles are uh, go a long way so if you keep a very simple profile i have mine very simple picture of uh, me and my son on a moped on there I just put that up because I barely use the that aspect of Facebook I share a few things with family and some friends maybe a project or two that I'm working on but I keep it very simple and something that shows people that I'm approachable just because when I'm reaching out to someone that's selling a car they can look at my profile and see okay this is a normal individual or semi-normal and and also that, you know, I look like a person that's ethical, that's going to conduct business in the right manner. So this is something that you may want to consider. So those are just my two cents. What's worked for me? You definitely do with your profile how you wish. Today, I'm going to focus more so on how to find those deals. So once you navigate to Facebook Marketplace, you're going to see that the icon is right up here. And it's real similar on the mobile app as well. I just chose to record this because it's it's much more I guess uh, you can learn a little bit quicker by just going on the computer right now uh, but if you get your mobile app it's very similar and some of the other resources I'm going to share with you right now that you can get mobile apps for too so <clears throat> I want to also show you right now that it's possible anywhere I live in Lexington South Carolina and you can set your your zip code or where you live right here and set up a radius of how many miles you're willing to travel uh, if it's 20 30 miles stay within your town if this is something that you're just getting started on then stay within your own neighborhood there are deals to be had anywhere and just to prove that i'm going to go in right now and change my city and state so that i can show you that you can do this anywhere so let's go to i'm going to go to a central location uh oxford connecticut i used to live in connecticut so i'm familiar with that area and instead of 50 miles i'm just going to narrow it down to 20 miles we're going to hit apply that's going to pop up everything that it's in that marketplace right there and within that radius now, if you look at the left column and you scroll down a little bit, you're going to see that there's different categories. Right now, it's cho showing you all the categories. Facebook is very smart. It's going to show you more of what you click on, and that's why a lot of cars pop up right away as soon as I'm in the uh, marketplace. So what I want you to do is you can determine, you can determine right now um, if you want to deep dive into one of these or I'm going to show you an extra step that you can do so you can filter this down even further so you're not getting some of these things like uh, lawnmowers, boats, and all that stuff. So if you go into the Yickles specifically, it's going to give you a lot of filtering options here. And if you see here, you're going to also see the Yickle type. That's where you're going to punch in cars and trucks. Now this is if you want to. If you just want to keep it general, so because there are some people that may use a general category to post a car, then that's okay too. For today's sake though, just to focus on the cars themselves, I'm going to show you just the car category. So right here, we can start screening through all the stuff that's on here. And you determine if you, let's say, you set your budget at $2,500, this $2,000 car might be an option for you right there. And you can see on your left-hand side, you can set your maximum uh, price range. So that can be your budget or it can be a few hundred dollars over your budget if you feel comfortable negotiating, which I'm gonna teach you how to do as well. And for now, let's check out to see what's going on here. This first one right here, this Volkswagen Jetta to 2008, a sedan 
with uh, 120,000 miles, that might be something that I'm definitely want to take a look at. Now, what I want you to observe is even though this doesn't have the most appealing picture on there, that's an opportunity for me as a buyer to flip this. So let's see, look, it looks wonderful. One of the things just from experience that I can pick up is that this front bumper has been repainted because it's a little bit darker than the rest of the car. It could be the camera, but in this case, I'm pretty confident that it is a painted bumper. The car looks pretty solid. Now here is something that I wanna look out for. This is another panel that's a little bit darker. So more than likely this car was in a fender bender. I can see that the hood is still original, but this fender and front bumper were definitely painted. So let's go a little bit into the description. Here <laughs> we have a little bit of a fail because this is a no start car. So it's not starting for a certain uh, reason and that's something that you just want to stay away from we've got kind of like two marks against it it's been in a fender bender it's not starting let's pass on to something that starts and runs and you can flip right away now let's look at this Ford Edge this is a Ford Edge $4,900 this person is definitely making extra efforts they edited their primary photo to include their price. So let's scroll through these pictures. Seems like a fairly decent car. It's got pretty low mileage for 2010. And so I'm scrolling through these pictures looking for the same things that I showed you before on that Volkswagen. So let's scroll down here and see their description. It says clean title in hand. So they are ready to sell well-maintained, great in the snow. This is a car that in the Northeast in Connecticut is definitely hitting the season of truck season, all wheel drive SUVs, Jeeps. So there, the demand there rises a little bit during this part of the year. So this might definitely be something that's worth taking a look at. Now, one of the steps that I like to make that's a little bit go, going a little bit further is remember I told you about the profile and how to keep your profile. I'm going to check the profile of this person because I want to make sure I'm dealing with somebody who seems like legitimate and just um, seeing whether or not they're also flipping cars because there's a lot of people doing this. And now sure enough, you go through here and He's got a bunch of cars on his profile. So more than likely this person is doing the same thing I want to do. And although I see that there's a little bit of profit margin on there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this one because I want you to find the private seller type of type cars. I'm going to go ahead and change a couple parameters here just so that we can find some more stuff. We're going to go from 20 to 40 miles and we are just going to go up to a budget of $3,500. Punch that in. All right. So one of the things that you want to consider is looking at cars that are uh, reliable. You know, some of the cars that have some good reputations like Hondas, Acuras, Toyotas. Uh, Ford, Chevys, and when you get to that car that you're going to start evaluating, do a little bit of background research on it as far as ratings, seeing if it's a dependable car or not, and some of the most common issues because thankfully today we are in a better age than we were 10 years ago uh, from doing research on cars. We can really find out what their corks are, how to fix them, how simple they are to take care of and those ratings that really give you the confidence to buy something that's gonna yield you good profit and you're not gonna get a money pit or a lemon. So let's look at this Honda. And this is a Honda Element. It's an LX Sport from what it says on here and it's a 2011, $3,500. It's within the budget that I set for myself right there. Uh, 166,000 miles, which is pretty good for a Honda that age. And you're gonna look at all aspects of this. Remember, we're in the beginning stages and this is where uh, you buy the car right so you can make profit every single time. So like I did before, I wanna show you some of the things that I do. I look at 
look through the pictures, see if there's anything obvious. You can see a little bit of a dent on the fender there. Other side looks good. This one is really showing that fender, what kind of repairs it needs. It's showing the dash. You know, if there's, it's showing the dash. If there's any li weird lights on, it'll definitely show you right there in that picture. It seems like a relatively clean car from what I can see in these pictures. The guy did a decent job at showing you what he has. Now I go into the description, great Honda element, runs good, needs plugs and coil packs, will not move on the price. So right now you know that he is firm on $3,500, but I'm gonna show you how to really build a little bit of rapport with this person because once you get them comfortable with you, they might shave off a few hundred dollars for you. But if the profit is there, don't worry about the couple hundred dollars that you can save now. Worry about the few thousand dollars potentially that you have in profit. So we're gonna go to our next Thing, which is let's check his profile you know it seems like he you know he's been active since 2012 and I'm gonna check through here to see if he has any other things on there single car seems like this is probably his daily driver this is the ideal scenario this is what we're looking for and trust me this is the research that you want to do before going out there and spending your hard-earned money plus your valuable time so this, goes like, this looks like a good candidate. Let's see if it's worth our time. We're gonna go to Kelly Blue Book, which is how I'm gonna evaluate this deal. Now you can go through VIN number if you have it. If you don't, it's fine to go make a model. This is a 2011. It is a Honda and it's a, uh, an element. We said 166,000 miles on it. Which is nothing for a Honda. You're gonna see the more experience you're gonna gather, you're gonna see common threads with Hondas, Toyotas, higher miles, they still retain their value really well. Email option right here, you don't have to do that. You just can go straight to the valuation of the car. Now on there, it said it was an LX sport model. So we're going to go with that. When you get to this place right here, you always want to price with standard equipment. This is a silver car. You can click on that if you want to. And this is when you, where you want to keep everything is trade in and private party values. Get a cash offer. You don't want to use that. I personally think it's in very good condition just because of the fact I don't normally go so much by here. This is a guideline, but it has very minor defects. So that fender and it seems to be very, very clean. Now, remember, he mentioned that it needs spark plugs and coils. So you want to make sure that the car is not misfiring in any way. He might be saying that just because he never did a tune up on it, which is a very, very simple thing. What this is going to do is going to pull the values for you and it's going to give you first the trade in value for this vehicle. So I want to make sure that everything is proper on here. Yep. So this car trade in value, you can see that these, the average trade in value for this is $7,600. Now, when we move to private party value here, it says 87. Look at the price range though. The, the, the range is gonna tell you how far you can go with this if you wanted to. If it's a car that's high demand like Hondas usually are and they're lower mileage, they're gonna go up towards that higher price range because it's a sought after car. It creates higher demand. You can see we've punched in all the criteria in here. The mileage is correct. I'm just punching in my zip code. So let's say I wanted to, there's a target of how much money I want to make on this deal. We can see right now, this car is priced at $3,500.
I can sell it for seven to eight thousand dollars right off the bat and I can see the type of profit there is possible to make here. So this is an excellent one for you. So if, in your, if you're in Connecticut and this is available for you right now, I would definitely go and see this car right away. If my target is to make $1,500, I'll just price it at $1,800 over what I bought it for and have a little bit of room for negotiating so that the person that's buying it from me feels like they're getting a deal and I just, I've made my $1,500 and I move on to the next. This type of car with the valuation that it came in with, now, now that I'm excited about this, I still wanna make sure to do my due diligence. So make sure to have that checklist. I'm gonna provide one, one for you so that you can follow what to look out for for these cars. And also that scan tool is very important. Spend your $20 on it. It definitely, spending $20 will save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars to make sure that the car is, is just sound. Um, and, and mechanically sound, you're gonna go through that from the checklist a small little thing like this on the fender, a small uh, dent like this, it's not a big deal. You can fix that if you want to, but honestly, I'm telling you, it's a used car 2011 and it looks really clean. This is a fantastic candidate. And the process that I showed you today, you can just duplicate and analyze any kind of deals you have out there. So now that we've narrowed it down and we see a good potential car besides doing my research, looking up the 2011 Honda Element, what are some of the known issues and Google them and check them out out there just as a simple, quick scan. I don't want you to deep dive so much get into analysis paralysis to where you're talking yourself out of a deal because time is of the essence. This car was listed a day ago and more than likely people are jumping all over this deal. And so you don't want to spend hours of, of, you can do this within minutes. And especially I will tell you just from my experience, I use my smartphone and I go through all of the same things. I've got my Facebook marketplace on here and also my uh, Kelly Blue Book app. And I can go through this stuff in a matter of minutes and know this is something that I wanna jump on right away. But for this, the sake of this training, I want you to focus on you know, the potential and the, the the way that you can start making money right away as soon as you get a couple of these under your belt. This is Flipping Cars. I hope you enjoyed today's content. Go ahead and drop me a comment, reach out to me. Let me know if there's anything you wanna add or something you wanna learn more of. I'll see you next time.